Welcome to Module 4 on Confidence Intervals, and this is Lecture 4, The Central Limit Theorem, and I should say Revealed, subtitled The Dog Goes Wild, and let me take a second to recommend my favorite book, Go Dog Go. Now, we're fixing to get really profound. Sit down and hang on. Just to introduce you to some concepts, we call them in mathematics in the land of nerd, we call them the Central Limit Theorem. I almost want to pull my shoes off because I stand on holy ground. What we're saying is, is that if we take an infinite number of samplings, which will produce an infinite number of X's, then some certain things are going to take place. Look at my little X bar one. All that means is, is that I took one sampling and this is the mean of that specific sampling. Now suppose I took a bunch of samplings. Do you see how the average numbers represented here by little black dots congregate around the mean? Doesn't it make sense to you that the mean of a sample would be very close to the mean of the population if those uh, samples are randomly taken? Uh, they will congregate around move. Now this is what the central limit theorem really says. It's very usable to us. It says that if we have a, a distribution, whether it's normal or not, and we take an infinite number of samples of size n, then our x bar distribution will be normally distributed around mu with the standard deviation of the x bar distribution equal to the standard deviation of the distribution divided by the square root of n. What that means is, is the more numbers that we include in our samples, the bigger our samples get, the tighter our x bars hover around mu. And eventually the idea being that if you had the whole population, well your x bar would be mu. Now look at this, this carefully and let it, let it grow on you. It's kind of like athlete's foot. If you'll stare at it long enough, it'll grow on you. The x bar distribution that is a distribution made up of an infinite number of sample means. We had to take, suppose we took infinite samples of size n. Then the x bars, the averages of those samples, are going to be normally distributed around mu with a very tight, very tight standard deviation. Represent the standard deviations with this picture. Do you see that the x bars are tightly clustered around mu with a standard deviation down there at the bottom which closes in on mu. Their average distance is small and is a product of the number in the sample. Now I've extracted that x bar distribution and we're going to do some creative things with it. With a given mu and sigma we can construct a confidence interval for a randomly selected x bar. In other words, if we know mu and we know the standard deviation of the population, we know sigma, we know mu and sigma, we can construct a confidence interval for x bars to know that if we randomly take a sample, we are so many percent certain that the mean of that sample will fall into a confidence interval. Here is our confidence interval represented by mu. We would have z scores, the, the level of confidence we want would determine our z scores, but we could draw that confidence interval which is tightly hovering around mu. We would have error and our error would be split in half. Actually our error is alpha over 2. So look at this just a second. You have, you know mu and you know sigma and therefore you can construct a confidence interval around mu which would allow you to be so many percent certain that a randomly uh, generated uh, samples mean would fall in that interval. The problem is we generally don't know mu and we don't know sigma. As always we have a solution but here again is the confidence interval for x bar. It is mu minus so many standard deviations of the x bar distribution below the mean and mu plus so many standard deviations of the x bar distribution above the mean. For a normally distributed population the x bar confidence interval might look something like this. You have it in blue, you have error, and then we have a formula to calculate it. But once more the problem is however that we generally do not know mu nor do we know sigma. We will know x bar and s. 
You should be able to sense that exciting things are about to happen. In this, in this little lecture, what we're doing is laying the foundation to actually move into inferential statistics in just a moment. You have two distributions here that are of interest to you. The first is the population distribution. Population distribution has mean move, and it has standard deviation sigma. You now you have an additional distribution, and that is the x-bar distribution around mu. That is the distribution of all of the possible sample means that could be generated by taking an infinite number of samples of size n. That distribution has mean mu, but has a standard deviation equal to sigma divided by the square root of n. There are two great things the central limit theorem does for you. The central limit theorem lets you know that the x bars are normally distributed around mu and that the standard deviation of the x bar distribution or sigma sub x bar is equal to sigma, which is the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. Now you know all. Enjoy the coming lectures. You're going to see neat things. Come soar with me. The best is yet to be.